Hi everybody, Kelly here again. Wanted to uh, share a quick tutorial for those of you who are trying to practice your zilling at home and you maybe have uh, pets or family members who are not so happy that you are trying to practice your zills at home. Uh, this is a super quick tutorial on how to make these little belt pockets that your zills basically just slide right into and you only need two of these to mute your zills, uh, one for each hand, or you can create four if you want to store your zills in these. I actually like to store uh, my zills in these. Today I'm going to be making a different set for a larger set of zills out of a different color of fabric so I can dig down into my bag of zills and find the ones that I'm looking for without having a mismatched set of zills. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So first let's talk materials. Uh, I like to use felt and you can literally use like these little cheapy, you know, pieces of craft felt that you can get at the store for like 79 cents a dollar. Uh, that actually works beautifully because it doesn't fray. So for those of you who are new to sewing, uh, you want to avoid something like this. This is lame. Those of you who do sew are like, oh yes, for the love of God, avoid lame. Because lame on the edges is terribly, terribly ravelly. And if you can see that, it just, I mean, this stuff just falls apart. So you want to avoid anything that's going to ravel a lot, uh, if at all. You, you really don't want anything that's going to ravel. So but we're getting rid of the lame. So I like to use uh, felt for this. You can also use any kind of maybe old washcloths that might not, uh, you know, ravel very much. Um, I also broke into my husband's underwear drawer and pulled out one of his old socks. So if you need or want to reduce, reuse, recycle, you can uh, use old socks for this as well. So you can actually just cut off the toe, cut off the heel, and then you have this little segment here that you can cut this seam or this, this line right here, and that gives you a a little flat piece of fabric and you can do the same up here with the leg of the sock. So old t-shirts will work, old sweatshirts will work. Just be aware that the thinner the fabric, uh, the more sound is going to come through. So for example, something that's super thin like this or a super thin t-shirt is going to let through more zill noise than something that's a little bit more substantial. Uh, for this project, you're also going to need, I like to use a ruler and a pen. You don't have to, but uh, I find it easier for straight lines because I tend to like cut wonky when I don't have lines. A pair of scissors, uh, some pens and a needle and some thread. Now I am going to be using mismatched thread today just to make it easier for everybody to see what I'm doing. But um, unless you just want to be funky, you can use matching thread. Uh, the other thing you're going to need, um, other than coffee, very important, uh, are your actual zills. So I actually use the zills to measure off of um, because why not? It's just easier. Uh, so this little little guy here, this was made specifically to go with my Saroyan arabesques. If we look really closely at this, and hopefully you can see this, I've got a seam line, this is hand sewn, uh, about half an inch out on either side. And this basically just makes like, a, it's like a flat piece and it goes right in the middle so that we can slide the zill right into it. Now, the thing about this is, and this is the thing I find very useful about having the zills uh, with you as you're working on this, instead of trying to work off the zill measurements, is that zills are three-dimensional, uh, which means that we need to give a little bit of uh, wiggle room on either side uh, to be able to get the zill in and out. So, I mean, technically looking at this, uh, this is my Nefertiti Pro Saroyan zill, and this technically looks like it should fit inside this pocket, but it doesn't. So we're going to have to give this, this zill in particular a little bit more wiggle room. So, I like to measure this stuff out here because um, this is, I, I cut, I cut crooked. Um, the, the zill you want to give it about, I say about half an inch on either side um, for the edges. So again, this little guy here, 
Um, I'm going to give about another half inch on this one just because the zill is about half an inch bigger. So I'm going to give it about half an inch on either side and that's going to end up being my cutting line, that half inch there. And then we're going to measure the length so that you can see how long it needs to be uh, and then we'll fold it this way and stitch the sides. Super, super simple. So for this one, this zill, um, I'm going to go with, let's see here. Um, I'm going to go with four inches. Um, here's a quick rule for those of you who are newer to sewing. You can always cut things smaller. You can never cut things bigger. So, uh, always cut a little bit roomier because you can always size it down as you need to. So I'm going to measure out four inches right here. I'm going to mark it a little bit. I'm going to measure it out four inches about right up here. And y'all, this is not exact science. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I also want to just quickly apologize for my arm and my hand because it's gross. I lost a battle uh, with poison ivy and I'm fighting off the poison ivy. So I apologize for looking like I've got the plague. Okay, so we can draw this line um, here. This is our side line of our little, little guy. And the the length that we need to cut here is going to be just a little bit bigger, again, about a half an inch bigger than the overall width of the zill. So this zill, if I measure here, is two and a half inches. You can see that there. For those of you who have actually moved into the future and use metric, let's see, uh, roughly like mm, six and a half or so um, centimeters. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm American and I have to use our weirdo system. So if we've got two and a half inches here and we want to give about a total of a half inch um, extra on this direction. See here, we've got, if I scooch this down, we've got a little over half an inch right there to give us room to get the zill in and out. Um, I'm gonna say this is gonna be three three inches. We'll give three inches on this one. Now, because we're doubling it, um, folding it, it basically doubles the length. So instead of just having three inches here um, for the, the size of our zill cover, we're going to double that to six inches. And so I'm going to measure here. Let's see, about six inches. And again, I'm going to give myself a little bit of wiggle room. I'm going to say six and a half. We're going to draw a line there. I'm going to measure down here. Y'all, my fabric ain't even cut straight. Look at that. It's okay. This doesn't have to be rocket science. It's just sewing stuff to help us. So there we go. I'm going to cut this bad boy out. And then we're going to test it to see if it works. Boom and boom. All right, put the zill in the middle. We're gonna fold this guy over. Oh, it's already, I can see too big. Good, that's a good sign. So we're gonna take this one, we're gonna slide it down a little bit till it roughly hits the edge. We don't want it to be too terribly close. We wanna give it a little bit of room, maybe like a little bit of wiggle room right there. And I'm gonna come to the middle right here at the zill because this is a great thing. The elastic is gonna be sticking out. I don't have elastic on these zills because I need to actually replace the elastic on these zills. That's for a different tutorial. Uh, so we're gonna basically make a little sandwich like this, yeah? And we only need to overlap this, like just barely overlap this to be able to, to catch these seams in here together. See that little three layer sandwich right there. So basically I can cut this extra piece off. So I'm just going to make a little line there. And here's my, here's my cheaty sewy. Those of you who sew, you know, we, we do this. I'm just going to line those corners up and I'm going to double that up and cut it just like that. Ta-da, it's done. Boom. Now, this should be a pretty good size. Now, if you want to test this, another way to test this is, and this is a good recommendation, especially if this is the, the first one, your first time ever doing this, uh, I like to, to take this and pin it. 
And let me stick that pen in my mouth for a second. Don't stick pens in your mouth. My mother has a fit every time I do this. And then I tell her that I learned it from watching her. So, um, so I'm just going to roughly pin this about where our seam line is going to be. And I've got a little crooked, crooked edge right there. That's okay. Again, this is not about perfection. This is about just not driving our families crazy with our zilling. And what we can do then is actually take it for a test slide and see if we can get the zill in. Uh, and that seems like that's going to work just fine. So now what I'm going to do, take those pins out. And I'm going to use uh, this piece as my pattern to cut my other pieces. Okay, so I can just lay this on there and chop, 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 draw them out, chop them out. And if you want to do, again, two, you can do four if you want to store your zills in these so that they're not clinking against each other in your dance bag. So this is like the Food Network. I'm going to pretend like I've done that and put this off to the side. Um, so the, the, I mean, this is so simple. The last step, we're just going to go ahead and refold that where it needs to be. So it's just barely overlap, just a little bit. We're going to pin this and then we're just going to sew these little lines here and here by hand. Super easy. Now, for those of you who I'm pinning it this way, cause this is, this is a little bit more secure pinning job. Um, for those of you who are brand new to any kind of hand sewing, um, I'm going to show you, uh, the way that I like to hand sew stuff like this. For those of you who are seamstresses, you already know how to do this. Um, if you want to log off now, you can. Love you, mean it, bye. You don't have to stay for this little tutorial on hand sewing. Uh, but the way that I like to do hand sewing is a much more secure stitch uh, than what's called a running stitch. Now, a running stitch uh, is... Okay, imagine a dolphin in the ocean and a dolphin when it swims, let's say this is the water line here somewhere up here, a dolphin when it swims will go up and down and up and down in the water, yeah? And a running stitch basically does the same thing. It's where we take the needle in and out and in and out and we're just running it straight through. Now, that's not a, a wrong way to sew. It's just that it's not necessarily the most secure way to sew something when we're just relying on the hand sewing and we need this to be a bit durable. So what I like to do instead is do a stitch where I come up through the bottom of the fabric, I go through the top of the fabric and down back to the bottom. So that first little, like, like our little dolphin, yeah. And then instead of going this way and bringing it back through, I go and I loop it. So it's like our little dolphin is doing like a curly cue like this. So what this looks like when we're sewing, actually, let me pause. I'm going to go ahead and grab some thread and I'll show you this in action in live time. All right, so I just realized if some of you are brand new to hand sewing, you may be like super brand new to hand sewing. So I'm going to show you um, how to do this really quickly. Uh, I have taken off probably, I'm so bad at judging this, like 18 inches or so of thread. You don't need a ton of thread. Um, you're going to take the thread, uh, lick it on the end, as, as always people have done for millions of years when they're sewing, and attempt to, oh my god, I should not be trying to do this on camera, uh, get this through. Okay, hang on, I'm nearsighted. Boom. Okay. Ta-da! Through the hole. We're going to take the thread all the way so that we match our little ends up. And there are a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, I like to just tie... A little just one little overhand knot like so grab your ends and pull and pull and pull and pull and move the knot down and you've got your thread now this is doubled up um, because the thread is thin and the fabric is thicker I may actually tie two knots just to make it a little bit thicker and I'm gonna try to overlay I don't know if you can see this, overlay those two knots on top of each other. So you kind of have to wiggle the knots a little bit, but anyway, there we go. 
All right, so I got a little fat knot right there. Like little fat knots for this kind of stuff. All right, so we don't have to have a ton of thread for this because we're just sewing just a teensy little distance. All right, so what I was mentioning about our dolphin. Our dolphin would go up and down and up and down all the way across. Now that leaves little gaps. And so sometimes that's not the most secure way to do this. What I'm gonna do is starting about, again, about a half an inch in, this is about, um, what, a centimeter and a little bit maybe? I'm so bad at metric. We're gonna come through the bottom. We're gonna go through the top. The stitch is not very big. You don't wanna make them too big. All right. And now our little dolphin is gonna come back up through. Let's see if you can see this here. And instead of going over here, he's gonna go right here, back through like the middle of that old stitch. Now what that does is it basically kind of presses the fabric together a lot more securely. And then we're gonna take another stitch out a little bit and through and out, flip it, look at it, and just, it doesn't, I mean, again, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's just that you want to, uh, it basically creates a little, it, it creates some compression between the layers. So that is uh, what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera off for just a second, because I know this is the most exciting thing in the world to watch me sit here and do this. Um, so I'll turn the camera off and we will reconvene in just a moment. All right, so we're now at the halfway point. Um, I'm going to, I'm basically just gonna sew right over this pin uh, and pull it out as I go through. You'll see I've got just a little tiny bit of overlap here. If you find that you don't have quite enough to overlap, it's actually still okay. Uh, your your Zill cover should work just fine. I'm just gonna take this over and you'll notice <laughs> my stitches have gotten bigger because I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to get this done quickly. So yeah, I'm just gonna sew over that one just like that. And I may take a couple of like slightly smaller stitches right here just to make sure that that little seam is reinforced. And then yoink that pin right out and we're ready to finish this one out. Alrighty, Ooh, back again. I'm getting ready to do my last little stitch here. And I just wanted to show you how this will look when you pull this up through. Um, I'm going to do, and look at that crooked ass stitch, it's okay. All right, I'm going to do uh, just a couple right through the end right there. And then you can tie a knot however you choose to tie a knot. Um, I'm going to try to do this this way, actually. I'm going to do this this way. I'm going to stick this through some old stitches. And I'm just going to poke it right through that. And tie that bad boy off. Uh, if you find that you don't have enough thread to tie a proper uh, like overhand knot, this is not the uh, fanciest way to do it, but you know what? It's it's effective and it works. And as my husband says, uh, what they say in the Navy is if you can't tie a knot, tie a lot. So there you go. Uh, you can literally tie like overhand knots like you tie your shoelaces. Tie a couple of those and make sure they're nice and tight. And these are the biggest scissors for snipping, but that's okay. Snip. And you are halfway done with this. All right, so uh, we'll go ahead. I'm going to finish the other side off camera and then we'll come back and test our zills out and make sure that uh, everything fits like it's supposed to. All right, we're back. Both sides have been sewn. Uh, we're gonna try this with this uh, whoop, with this bigger zill. See if we can fit this in here. And it's kind of like a little little pita pocket for your. Uh, it's a zill pita. There you go. Um, okay, so that fits just fine. Um, I'm gonna grab one of my other zills and we'll give this a test ring. All right. See if I can get these elastics on. Uh, my elastics are a little bit tight right now. That's okay, that way they don't sling off and hurt somebody. Um, so now, um, as I'm practicing, this is the sound we get. So very, very mild sound. You still get the sensation of playing the zill and you can hear a 
little bit of sound, but it muffles enough that it's not going to drive everybody crazy. So you make uh, two to four of these. You can always trim this edge a little bit if you decide you don't want quite that much extra. And obviously when you use a matching thread, you're not gonna see all of this. It's gonna look uh, more like more like this, obviously. Now the only caveat I have uh, to using a stretchy fabric, just so you know, if you are new to sewing, when you use a stretchy fabric like this attractive man sock here, uh, just be aware that when you try the zill on um, to see how to fit and, and how wide you need to make this piece, that the stretch is going to play into that a little bit. So you will need to stretch the fabric just a little bit as you try this on, uh, just to play with it um, so that it's not gonna be too big and, and potentially slide off. You also don't want it to be too tight. So again, just experiment, um, steal some socks that nobody's gonna miss uh, and play with that a little bit if you decide you wanna use something stretchy. All right, well, there we go. I hope this was useful for you. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, let me know down in the bottom in the comments. Bye, everybody.